All right, so what do we have today? Customer shipped this in to me from Indiana. Cornwell Quality Tools Inductive Timing Light. Well, let's take a peek at it and see what's in it. Oh, look at that. It's already torn apart. A little extra disassembly going on right there. So I think this customer said that some of the cables got ripped or damaged somehow and I wonder if I could kind of straighten it out. Oh, look at that. Yeah, some of the terminals have been ripped off the circuit board. So let's see where they go. Maybe we can fix it. Who knows? So yeah, already had the timing light apart. So nothing inside. All right, so we just got to figure out where the terminals came from and what they actually do. Looks like he might have tried to fix this. Not quite sure. Anyhow, let's investigate further. All right, so to try to figure out what everything does in this, I've taken apart the inductive pickup. There's the coil, and you can see the two coil leads leading down here over this purple wire, but the purple wire appears that it goes just to this ground up here and nothing else. So if I follow the purple wire back down, it goes to the brown wire on that cable. So it looks like all that we're using is the green and then the white is going to be the actual pickup lead. And there is a 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor across the green and the white. But that's all there is in this thing. No electronics whatsoever in the pickup. So the brown goes to ground, the white is the pickup lead, and the green is the common for the pickup coil. up here. So let's go ahead and see if we can figure out how they've got this configured on the circuit board. Okay, so looking at this trace right here, the one that's missing right here, I do believe the battery positive cable used to attach here because it goes up through this blocking diode to the positive side of this 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is go ahead and slice this trace right here then run a jumper wire from this point on the other side of the slice to the input of this blocking diode right here. We'll go ahead and attach the positive lead here. Now, if you see this little tiny plate through right here, that goes to the back of the board. And it actually goes to this plate through right here, which is the large common ground pad for the entire circuit board. If you notice these two large plate throughs right here, those are those two right there. So they connect the earth, the large cable that goes to the negative terminal of the battery through to the backside ground plane on the circuit board. And then it connects this little tiny earth right here, which probably connects the brown wire, which we determined is the ground for the inductive pickup, the shielding. So I think all I need to do is connect this hot over to this side of the input blocking diode. That's the reverse polarity protection diode. So you have to have a positive voltage on this side to get a positive voltage on this side. If you were to hook up the battery clamps backwards, this diode would not be turned on. It wouldn't conduct any electricity and the unit wouldn't operate but it wouldn't self-destruct at the same time by trying to charge this capacitor in the reverse polarity. So I think the customer, since these two are probably ground and the one wire ripped off, he just tacked it on over here, that's perfectly fine. But since this one ripped off and it goes to the input of the blocking diode, he just attached it to the one next to it and see there's a ground jumper here that's not in use and it actually blew out that trace. I did an ohm test from this terminal to the ground the large feed throughs right here, no connection. So that earth has been blown open right there. So we'll just go ahead and attach those two leads. We'll somehow run a jumper maybe around the back of the circuit board to the ground pad. Like I said, we'll slice this one. We'll run a jumper from here to the input of the blocking dial. This will be the new DC input terminal. And I think this unit is going to be back on the road once again. So I've gone ahead and sliced that trace right there so it's no longer connected. And I went ahead and I scuffed this up. And if you see it looks like a mess, well it is because I don't like to use just a straight copper pad. I like to make a mess of it. That way the copper bonds better to the solder. So I'm gonna make kind of a just a scribbling mess on it here. Then we'll add some solder to it and we'll just put a jumper lead from here over to the diode 
right here. All the leads are redressed, they're on the board. Now for our little magical solution, acetone. Oh, that looks much better. Now for the bottom of the board. All right, much, much better. So what I did, because this little plate through that you can just barely see right there is damaged, I went ahead and scraped a jumper and I ran a jumper wire all the way across to that solder pad right there because that little plate through was defective. That's the same plate through on the other side of the board. Now, because this trace is lifted off the board, it used to go to the input blocking diode. I went ahead and put a jumper physically on top of everything and ran it to this trace, which I, I cut the trace. So this is now an unused trace. So that's now the positive input for the board. I went ahead and ran another jumper here and I sliced that trace that goes through that plate through because it goes to this little tiny trace right there. It's not used. So once that trace is sliced, I went ahead and added a jumper back down to this trace for the negative input. So this is the shield to the inductive pickup and this is the pulse from the inductive pickup. Now we just have to put it back together and give it a test and see if it's gonna do anything. And because there's no strain relief whatsoever, I opted to go ahead and double wrap a couple of zip ties around this post. So that way it's going to be strain relieved as it goes through this hole. So hopefully it won't pull stuff out for a second time. Anyhow, there is the board reinstalled back in the unit. We'll go ahead and try to fire this thing up and see if it's going to do anything. Okay, I've got the unit hooked up to my car. I mean, it's on the number one wire, but it really doesn't matter anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and start this up. And we'll see if we get some flashes. There it is. It's working. Don't really have a timing mark, but anyhow, it's working. Okay, well, it certainly works. That is totally awesome. The Eliminator 80 from Ferret Industries. So I'm beginning to think that that case was not meant for this timing light at all. Anyhow, there it is, up and running. Works absolutely perfect. I think this customer is going to be very, very happy that he got his timing light back once again. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the questions and respond when I have time. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the e-waste facility, and out of the recycle bin. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Bye-bye.